The state of Connecticut is home to some of the wealthiest areas in the world, with five towns that have median household incomes over $150,000. At the same time, there are four towns with median household incomes below $40,000. Along with a plethora of other issues, this creates an education system in which some districts have the highest spending in the nation, whereas others cannot even afford busing for their students. The fact is, it's not just districts like Bridgeport and Hartford that are failing our students. It's the entire state, and in fact, the entire nation. Throughout the U.S., parents, students, and politicians seem dumbfounded by our nation's lagging education system, and for good reason. Even Connecticut, one of the better states for education in the U.S., has math scores below that of 23 nations, including Iceland and Slovakia, and English proficiency scores below that of nine nations, including Australia. These are very disturbing facts, given that the state of Connecticut spends more per student on education than any nation in the world. There are a variety of theories as to why this could be occurring, but it is in fact very simple. Why is it that so many other American industries have been booming over the last several decades, while educational performance is completely stagnant, even while funding has increased drastically? The answer is that we treat education fundamentally differently, when in reality the same principles apply. No one centralized policy can fix our system, because even if we have some of the best and brightest educators working for our state, they cannot know for certain what policies will work, and they cannot effectively put pressure on schools to succeed. Only giving local districts and teachers the freedom and the incentive to succeed can do that. There are three prongs that I believe can make our education system thrive like our other industries. We need to give schools, one, the resources to succeed, two, the incentive to succeed, and three, the freedom to innovate. Let's examine these one at a time. The first prong, resources, is currently being controlled by the education cost-sharing formula, known as ECS. In theory, it weighs the needs of the students in a district and the wealth of the district to determine how much state aid they should receive. However, that is often not how it truly ends up playing out. I spoke to James Finley, Principal Consultant for Operations and Government Relations at the CCJEF. He had this to say, um, the state has chronically underfunded the education cost-sharing formula. They continue to modify the formula over the years uh, so that it would uh, be funded at a predetermined political level. The solution here is to make all school funding statewide. Every school in Connecticut is granted $15,000 for students from their designated area and 16000 for students from outside of it. This does not change the overall education spending. It simply redistributes it to make the rest of this plan possible. The second prong of my proposal is incentivizing success. Currently, parents have little recourse if their local schools are not living up to their expectations, unless they can afford private schooling. The only real control they have is over who they elect to the Board of Education. But even then, it is almost impossible to tell who is doing a good job and it takes a significant time commitment for parents to have any significant impact on their children's education. That is unacceptable. I spoke to Michael Shaw, research assistant at EdChoice, a national organization that advocates for school choice. Our belief is that families uh, should have the right and be empowered to choose the educational options that are best for their children, and that those options shouldn't be dictated by geographic lines or by uh, by governments. This can be resolved by allowing students to go to any public school in the state. Given that all school funding would be statewide, there would be no fiscal issue with this. Everyone would be under the same education tax code and every school would receive the same funding. Then, students will disproportionately go to the best schools in their area, meaning that not only are those students receiving the best available education, they are also creating an incentive for the other schools in the area to improve themselves. This gives parents considerably more control over their children's education. The third prong of my plan is providing schools the freedom to innovate. Currently, the state is deeply involved in education, and there are many obstacles to any significant policy changes at a local level. This is solved by removing the state almost entirely from education, aside from providing funding, and opting out of Common Core. 
While this may seem counterproductive, it has become apparent that no universal policy implemented at the state level can fix our education system. What we need is a wide variety of innovations across our state so that we can truly determine what policies are most effective for our students. The biggest concern with this plan is the major funding cuts that would be sustained by high-spending districts. However, I plotted the funding per student and average SAT scores of every Connecticut school district, and what I found was that the correlation between the two was extremely weak, bordering on non-existent. But there are so many other factors that impact the school's test scores aside from funding. The wealth of the town, how many English language learners they have, their parental education level, all of these factors can affect a school's test scores. So, in an attempt to isolate the impact of funding on school performance, I collected information on all of these factors and plugged them into a multivariate regression model. This allowed me to create an expectation of the school based on all of the things they can't control. In essence, how well would they be doing if their educational quality was exactly average? I can then subtract this from their actual performance to determine how much better or worse than average any given school is performing. What I found was that funding did play a role, but its impact was less than that of almost all the other factors mentioned previously. The already minimal impact of funding on education becomes even smaller when it comes to higher spending districts. A logarithmic curve, which flattens out as the X value, or funding, becomes higher, fits the Connecticut educational data more accurately than a line, meaning that given $1,000 to a district that spends $12,000 per student has a larger impact than taking $1,000 from a district that spends $18,000 per student. So will this funding change have an impact on wealthier schools? Probably, but it will be a very minimal one. The impact that this expanded school choice will have, on the other hand, is proven to be significantly positive. The time for minor fixes to our education system has come and gone. It has become clear that our current system is failing. My three-pronged plan, providing resources, providing incentive, and promoting innovation through free market competition, is the best way to make our education system successful. Only when we enact such a system will we be able to provide not just adequate but exceptional education to all of our students.